from the previous video, I showed you how to use Laravel Fortify and or email verification. In this video, we're going to look at setting up a user profile page where the user can edit their username and email address. And we're going to be using Laravel Fortify actions to carry out that edit within our database. The first thing I'm going to do is create a controller for this. So over in the terminal, I'm going to do a PHP artisan. I'm going to make a controller. I'm going to put this under a username space. I'm going to do a double backslash here. Sometimes on Windows in particular, the double backslash does not work. You just need to do a single backslash. But in the same way on certain Unixy type systems, a single backslash doesn't always work. So you might have to do a double backslash. So just keep that in mind. So it's going to create a new folder called user. And I'm going to create a controller inside of here called profile. So let's just open this up in our editor. So under controllers, we can now see that new user folder here. Now we don't actually need much inside of here. We only need it to be a single action, and that is to return a view. Because Laravel 45 provides everything else that we need. So let's just have a quick look at that. So under the root of the project, if you come under app and then actions, you can see inside of the 45 folder, we have an update user profile information. So let's just open this up and you can see in here, just like our create user action that we've used when we were registering a user, this update action contains everything that's needed, including all the validation and then also the updating of the user's name and email address. So this does all the heavy lifting for us. It also creates a root for us, which is a put endpoint where if we just send it the name and an email address, it'll execute all of this logic for us. So let's set up our application to do this. So over in our user profile controller, because this is only going to need that one action to show the form, I'm just going to create an invocable controller here. So to do this, we just do a public function. And then we call the magic method invoke to do that. It's a double underscore and then invoke. And then inside of here, we just simply return a view and I'm going to create a new folder in the views called user and I'm going to create a view called profile inside of there. And the next thing we need to do is just create a root that actually points to this controller. So over in our roots folder, um, we're going to open up web.php again. And then what I'm going to do here is create a new root group and group all of our user account pages into this one group. So I'm going to do a root and we're going to give this a prefix and I want all these prefixed with the term user. I'm going to apply some middleware because I want the user to be authenticated. And I also want the user to have verified their email address. Now I'm going to give all of the routes inside of here a name for the view and all their names are going to be prefixed with the term user and then dot. And finally, we want to make this a group and that just takes in a closure as the first argument. And then we put all our roots inside of this closure. So it's pretty much the same setup as what we did on the admin. Obviously, we're just using this for the user pages. So I'm just going to put a comment up above it here. So I'm just going to put user related pages. And inside of here, the first one is going to go to that profile page. So I'm going to do a get root. And this is going to go to profile. And then we need to go to that newly created profile controller. We want to go to the profile class. Now my idea is put all this in front, but you can bring this in at the top if you wish. And I might actually just do that. So I'm just going to delete everything before profile. So my idea is pull the full namespace in here, but we don't need the app HTTP controllers part. So we just get rid of that. And that's because the roots file is namespace to the app HTTP controllers folder already for us. So you just need to use user backslash profile. So it's not all typed down here inside of the root. And then finally, let's tag on the here the name. And this is going to be a name of profile. Obviously, the name is going to be prefixed with user dot here. And also the root profile is going to be prefixed with forward slash user. Now we just need to create a link to this inside of our view. So under resources views, I'm going to open up templates and I'm going to open up the main.blade.php file. Then up here where we're checking the auth if a user's logged in or not, you see we have two routes of home and one of logout. We don't actually have a home route set up, so we're going to get rid of that anyway. And inside of here, I'm going to say profile. And then we just need to change that URL to a root because we've got a name root for this. And it's going to go to user profile. Now let's try this out in the browser. 
Now we give this a refresh. We can see we have our new profile link. Let's just click that and we should get an error because we haven't created that view yet. And you can see there we're getting that error that it can't find the view user profile. So let's actually create that next. So under resources views, I'm going to create a new folder in here and I'm going to call this user. Now the update shares quite a bit with the register page. So if we come under auth and get that register view, so I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to paste that into user. Then inside of this view, if we change the register to update profile, uh, the method's going to be post, but we need to send this to a put. So we'll spoof that method in a minute. And if we actually have a look at the routes with inside of Laravel Fortify that provide us as default, so I'm going to do a PHP artisan route list. And if we find the user profile part here, we can see it's expecting a put and it's got a name root of user hyphen profile hyphen information dot update. I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to put that in there as the root. So as we see, this requires a put. So down here, let's spoof this. We can do that with an at method and we want to send a put method rather than the actual post that we're sending here. We can actually leave the name and email address as it is, but we want to get rid of the passwords. And the reason for that is because Laravel Fortify has a dedicated flow for a user change in the password. If we take a look at the update user profile action from Laravel Fortify, you can see it's only expecting a name and an email and the validation. And then it's also only filling in the name and the email when it's updating. It doesn't actually update the password. If you have a look under the project under app actions Fortify, you can see there's a separate action called update user password and that is dedicated for the password. Something that we will look at in a future video. The final thing we want to do is pre-populate the fields with the current user's information. So over at the end of the input, we have the value and it's currently old name. But what we'll do is we'll go into auth, we'll grab the current user and we'll fill in their name. And we'll just copy this down for email also. We'll get rid of this old email here, copy that in, remove name and put in email. Now let's test this out. Oops, and it looks like I forgot to uh, rename the view. So I copied the register view here into the user folder, but I didn't rename it. So let's just rename that to profile. We don't want a register view in there. Now let's give this page a refresh again. And there we go. We get our update profile page. And it's populating our name and our email address for us. So instead of test user here, I'm just going to fill my name in. So I'm going to update this to Mark and I'm going to keep the same email address. And let's just click submit on this. I can see we get our notification back from Fortify. And again, the, and the message coming back isn't really user friendly. Maybe that's something that can be updated at a later time in Laravel Fortify. But for now, at least we know our notification working and we can also see now our name and we can also see now our name is set to mark so we can just double check this in the database just to make sure that it has updated so back over in the sql database i'm just going to do a select star from users where id is equal to 190 in my case and a backslash g and we can see the name of this user has now been updated to mark so that's how easy it is to create a user profile page and also use the Laravel Fortify update action to update the user's name and email address. Now, if you found this video helpful, please give this a thumbs up and also hit that subscribe button as that helps the channel grow in the YouTube rankings.